When I promised myself that I would write something daily, I didn't think that I would get back to the usual 12-year-old self-pitying diary, but rather thoughts that I have somewhere inside me that await to be released. For a while now, the sound of these unknown thoughts have weighed on me and became really present. I know I have things to say, but don't know what or how. That left me wondering how to get access to these messages within me. You need to learn to tell stories. That's all I got back. I wonder if it's my lack of knowledge or skills or good lighting. But deep down, I kind of knew that the stories that come out of my heart, it's what I need to practice more than anything. I decided to learn and practice and make use of the current skills and words that I have. It's been too long since I've been waiting for the day or the summer in order to create something worth putting out there. Like any selfish woman, I'm going to start talking about myself, the world seeing through my pair of eyes. I don't have a strategy and can't see how this would help anyone in any way, shape or form. Rather than feed into the attention and validation that I seek from the outside world. At this point in time, my old friends would have perhaps thought of me that I became a sad woman. I've been sad since I've known myself, but that also worked to my advantage. That made me question things that children don't usually do. I was forced to mature when a child, and now I live my childhood in my 20s. I became aware that, regardless of the biological age, the psychological level of one's being evolves whenever we give it space and attention necessary to develop, learn and grow. Unfold one's wings, they say. I never had wings, even though I seem to be always in the clouds. But don't picture it as pretty as it sounds, because he ain't. Being in the clouds, definition. Away from oneself, not grounded. Resistant to one's limitation in human existence. Not present. I used to fuel my self-pity with the unfairness of the world. And boy, how that worked. I had pages and pages filled with tears and playful words that would have made anyone feel sorry for me. I remember I used to ask the language teachers to give me titles of essays, to challenge myself and come up with stories that were bursting from my heart. People were paying attention to me. Adults were paying attention to me. I was hurt and made sure they knew it. I had a talent for it. It worked. They treated me differently from other people. I was a special case. I got away with things, wanting them to worry, to chase me, to find me, to love me. But it wasn't enough. It was never enough. Now I know that they couldn't feel what I was missing, because what I was missing was already there, within me, even though it didn't feel like it at the time. So I invested in self-pity and resistance to what was, until I created some sort of spiral that was slowly sucking the soul out of me. I needed wings to get out. Having wings, definition, courageous, being able to move faster than everyone else, being able to go after someone sinking and pull both of you out of there, protection, sacrifice, 
Remember the unfairness of the world that happened to me? Well, I grew to learn that it happens to everyone. If you were born in this universe, things are unfair by default. That works both to and against you. Now, let's get this straight. The life circumstances given were never cruel, but rather lonesome and confusing. Going to sleep with heavy thoughts as a young self paused my development, being able to grow wings and spread them. Knowing that I have a talent to make people feel sorry for me, I wanted to clarify without quite clarifying that nothing bad happened, but rather silly which later on led me to choose for bad things to happen. It's all a matter of choice, consequences and responsibility for the outcome, which I almost never took. You know those moments where you kneel down and cry your heart out to prayers printed on an A4? The moments where you ask, why me? And when you come back from all the drama and the noises you make like a wounded dog, with your puffy eyes, all you hear is the sound of your pounding ears and your snot. You feel betrayed, somehow, that the world hasn't joined in. You feel that your feelings don't matter, that God knows anything and everything and that makes things easier for Him that he can move his magic wand and get whatever he needs. Whereas me, the little blonde dweeb, is left facing the walls with scribbles of flowers and clouds and quotes from my favorite Eminem songs. But at the same time, you feel a sense of peace. And you don't know that it's because you're wasted or because God does seem to love you. Either way, you choose to hope that God does love you because otherwise you can't cope with the idea that you're on your own. Note that I said hope and not believe. But despite the lack of belief and shitloads of hope you, the universe had it all worked out for me. It gave me wings. Not mine, remember? I didn't have wings. Mine didn't get to grow. I became aware that you don't need to grow wings in order to fly. And that didn't mean that I will never get to fly. <laughs>